Welcome back to Momo on the Move, people. Today's special guest, we have Steph Delgado, my G. She's been on the podcast before for A Bronx Tale. Woo-woo. Thank you for having me again. Of course. Thanks for letting us shoot in your apartment out here in LA. Um, and a new guest. It's her first time on Momo on the Move. It's my cousin, Jasmine. Say what up. I was gonna say, I hope you don't sound like that. She is not shy. She is not shy. She's been talking left and right. So we started. Anyway, today's podcast is all about female empowerment, strength, and all that good stuff. It's gonna be called Females in Fitness. And these two ladies right here, as well as myself, have (laughs) taken fitness very seriously in our lifestyles as well as nutrition. So we're just gonna talk about what inspired us, what we're doing now to stay active, and give you guys some advice and tips to anyone who's just starting this fitness lifestyle or taking their health a little bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) So the first question I have for you ladies is, what inspired you guys to get active and make it a lifestyle? Um, all right. We'll start with you. Well, start. I guess mm-hmm. we'll start off since she's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, okay. What inspired me? Um, I feel like I've always really been an athlete. Uh, growing up in elementary school, I was a tennis player. Um, you know, I moved up to high school and was a gymnast. And then I, when I, I went to that. college, they didn't have a gymnastics team, mm-hmm. so I joined cheerleading, which was you were a Very, cheerleader? Yeah. A cheerleader. Oh my god. <laughs> Lord. Um, I pledge. Cheerleaders be good. I then. pledge while I was cheerleading. Oh my god. What a typical oh sorority girl. She's also, if you didn't know, she's my great grand big in, in my sorority. sorority. Pi Phi Delta. Shout out. Well, she's deep <laughs> Yeah. But that's a whole different Whatever. story. Whatever. That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so I feel like I've just always been an athlete, um, always been moving. Um, and when I moved out to LA, the weather is so beautiful. I had like no excuse to not Do move, something. you know, yeah, it's a lot it, easier than it's a lot York. easier. There's, you know, um, I'm a runner, which I'm sure we'll get into later. There's no like having to bundle up and go running. There's no black ice that I have to worry about or snow or slush. So I just felt like being in such a beautiful city like LA, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Um, so yeah, so I feel like I've always, you know, I've always just been into fitness. Uh, I, is there anyone that like inspired you to like get it? I mean, like back in the day, back in the day, like originally, like originally, I don't know, but now you know who I'm going to say. Michael B. Jordan? No, (laughs) J-Lo. Oh, (laughs) J-Lo. Michael B. Jordan is her man crush. That's my man. Don't oh yeah. Real <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I mean. I think. I, I mean. Jayla looks. Um, She's amazing, and like I can't even put into words. What? Yeah. How amazing and how perfect she is, just at her age. Um. Yeah, but I also now. think you know. She has money and she has the time and she gets paid to do all these things. She gets she, she has, has to look money to you know, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I, I think those, those you I think, think those are natural. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. But we gotta you hate know what? <laughs> we gotta hate it. We're gonna kick her off this podcast. Yeah. In about five seconds. It's because you're from the Bronx. Of course, the <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um. Yeah, and you know, uh, I'm a big Nike supporter. I love what they do. I love the brand, uh, clearly. Um, And their whole thing is if you have a body, you're an athlete. So I feel like there's just no excuse. We all have the case. Just do it. Except literally. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, All right. (laughs) Jasmine. Your turn. Your turn. Um, Well, I have my dad to thank for getting into everything like sports mainly um because my mom wasn't much of a an athlete growing up but she'd be dancing she'd be she, dancing she, that she does shake what your mama gave you that room <laughs> she definitely um does dance but um i started uh soccer at the age of five so ever since then like i've been playing aso and 
was um, ASO. Like the AYSO one. is like the, um, um, what's it called? The organization okay, for nice. children, for soccer for children. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. Our cousins, Joshua and Jonathan, played there too. So, like, we just had games, like, every Saturday and Sunday, you know, tournaments and everything. So, yeah, my dad's side of the family was super fit and <laughs> active compared to my mom's side, who just likes to eat and <laughs> drink. And, drink. And the only exercise we do is dancing. <laughs> That's an exercise. But like while we're eating and drinking, so <laughs> oh like it, the balance is thrown off. Yeah, but and then once it got to middle school, my asthma got really bad, so there wasn't much that I could have could do. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was on the machines like all the time oh, you know. and stuff. Yeah, so that's why like, I love I, my podcast because I be asking questions and I find something new every time. <laughs> So, yeah, so in middle school, I did some sports. Like, I did the sports that you would do in the after-school yeah. programs. Okay. Like, basketball and softball. So, that's where I found my love for softball, too. Mm-hmm. So, I played in, like, a, a rec league at uh, Reseda Park. And I played there with, like, the girls and everything. And after, uh, when I, once I got to high school, I hadn't played soccer in, like, three years. So, I was out of shape. And soccer whips you into shape. Yeah. And so at the tryout, like, I was like, oh, my God, I don't think I made it. But I did make it. I made it on TV, you know. Okay. Whatever. A star baby <laughs> Yes, yes, as a freshman. And then um, after that, um, I just played um, soccer for three years on the school team. And then um, on a club team as well. I was actually, like, the captain for one of my club teams. Okay, okay. Um, it was a very good though. <laughs> but but we you, somebody there. voted you to, to be the leader here, so you but must have done something right. I, I probably did, I don't know. But, um, and then after that, um, I also joined the softball team at school. So I had that. So I, I guess softball, baseball, and soccer are like my go-tos. I'm not too much like about basketball. Like I like basketball. Basketball is my favorite, number yeah. one. But um, soccer and softball, so yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. As for <laughs> me, I was inspired actually by my aunt who also runs marathons mm-hmm. and she runs marathons. We'll get into it. Mm-hmm. But I remember she came to run the New York City Marathon and she's from out here in LA, so she came, and I was like, maybe like... Shout out, Tiana. Shout out, Tiana. <laughs> she's going to be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember I was like, maybe like 10, 11, 12, somewhere. Mm-hmm. I was young, but like I, it was like my chubby phase. You're still mm-hmm. young. <laughs> and, but like, that's like baby. And then I remember she was like, going out for a run. I was like, all right, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you. But like, I forgot she was training yeah. for a whole marathon. <laughs> and she was like... I didn't know how far, but she was like, oh, after, like, the you first, like, when she there. was like, I'm trying to run six miles to Port Jeff, and I was like, from my house? I'm like, what? <laughs> I literally ran to, like, the first stop sign that I saw <laughs> my body. I was like, Thea, I didn't know it was going to be all like that now. And then after mm-hmm. that, I realized, I was like, damn, like, she's way older than me, and she's, like, yeah. killing it. I have a six-pack. She's doing her thing. I was like, I need to get into shape. And then it's like funny because my family in New York, they're just like, they love to eat and they're heavy, you know, they're, they're chubby, they're thick. Mm-hmm. So like they would always like, but they love to be judgmental and like call you out on being fat. So I'm like, how young? So then I, I had that, <laughs> I, at, that. I had that in the back of my head. I was like, I can't be fat. Meanwhile, yeah, they're like, fat too. So I'm together. just like, but then after that, I started running every day. Like I was still running marathons. Uh, no, not anymore, but she does her six miles every morning, like, at 5 a.m. Six miles? Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she's like, how old is she? Uh, she's 50. That's she, amazing. She, she's yeah, she's that's a amazing. killer. She's a killer. Yeah. So she was my inspiration at first, and then I fell in love with sports, basketball, always. I was always, like, a tomboy, too, so I'd always mm-hmm. like, play basketball with my, my guy cousins, and um, then after that, it was volleyball, track, field hockey, lacrosse. And then I played all the intramurals in college. And then yeah, after that, um, I came out. I did a little kickboxing in New York. And then when I came to L.A., I fell in love with boxing. I'm sure you all already know this. And boxing has been amazing. So Team Sanchez. I'll thank Sanchez for the inspiration to keep going. Yeah. But I still have to go to one of those one of his classes. Yes, me come too. with me. I'll take both of you. I need to. I always bring killers to him. So. <laughs> 
I'm going to die <laughs> after five minutes. Listen, Priscilla did I'm it. So you could do it. Priscilla? Priscilla can. Okay. I've, been, I've been training everybody. <laughs> um, so, Steph, um, yeah. how did you, because I was my next question was, what is your favorite way to stay in shape now? Mm -hmm. But you already mentioned you're a runner, so we can go off that. <laughs> Yeah, so I, it was always in my bucket list to run the New York City Marathon in particular before I turned 30. Um, I, you know, growing up in New York, it's a real, it's a big deal. The marathon mm -hmm. is a big deal. People yeah. always go and cheer. And I was always like, I want to do that. I want to do that. Um, so I did Pops it. Props to you. Because after three miles, I'm like, I don't know why I'm still running. <laughs> Um, so I did it, uh, 2017 and I had such a great time. Like people are like, you're crazy. I'm like, everything was perfect. Like just from the training session and I, you know, I want to say my dedication and my mentality, I was in it a hundred percent. Did you have someone train you or? No, I train, I run with different running groups. So that's who I would lean on, but essentially running's on your own, you yeah. know, because I can tell you, Hey Mo let's meet tomorrow at 9 a.m. to go running but if your pace is faster or slower than me mm -hmm. then it's like take off i'll stay you take off yeah. so essentially running really is on your own yeah um because there are people faster than me and there are people slower than me and i'm just at my pace you know yeah, it's an independent uh, sport absolutely um yeah so i had such a great time i loved the crowd it was just everything was amazing that i signed up and i did it again so I did the New York Marathon back to back. And how many back. miles is the marathon? So people who don't know. 26.2. That is Are you going to do the LA crazy. Marathon soon? Well, the LA Marathon just passed this yeah. Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so it just passed Sunday and I was supposed to, I verbally committed, but I didn't fully commit. Um, I just feel like if I'm going to do something like that, my heart needs to be in it 100%. Right. Um, because, you know, when my legs... It, cliche but when like your legs are tired what's going to push you is like your own motivation and your like, mental your own heart your mental exactly. your mentality and i just wasn't there um so i didn't do the the la marathon that just passed um but i am going to do a half ma nike's half marathon on april 5th um so that should be light work 13.1 <laughs> running 13 miles on saturday Not ran 12 last deal. saturday we good um but um, I guess to kind of pivot off your question a bit, I so I don't also run. Um, I go to a gym. It's called Orange Theory Fitness. I've been hearing a lot about that. Um, so yeah, I love it. I love my coaches. Um, it's half cardio, so you have either you're on the treadmill or you're either on the rower, and then you have some time on the floor. Okay. Um, I've been doing Orange Theory going on two and a half years, but it's so much cardio, and I already do What's cardio. What's the difference on. between Orange Theory and a regular gym? Like, is, are they it, class based? Is it it's just, it's just, just classes. classes. Okay. Yeah, it's classes. Um, so it's more like so yeah, someone's always telling you what yeah, to do. Exactly. Some exactly. people, some people, need some people that. like that structure, and yeah. I'm somebody I like structure, so I like that. Mm -hmm. um, but just recently, I paused my membership for thirty days because. I'm like this is too much cardio I already run on my own mm -hmm. um I run long distance on Saturdays I do track on Tuesdays and running different days you know mm -hmm. however many mileage um and running there I was like this is just too much cardio for me I'm already petite as it is I'm, yeah I lo actually lost 10 pounds from my first marathon that I had Girl, you're, you're, back you need, you're gonna disappear exactly <laughs> So I joined this lifting gym. It's called Lift Society. Mm -hmm. And over the past 30 days, my membership's over on Sunday, um, I've seen the difference. Yeah. Cutting down cardio to strictly just my strength track training. Tuesdays and long distance Saturday and then strength training for five, four to five days a week. My body has changed like so much. So I'm definitely going to... Do you feel or like you're running faster or slower now with this added like muscle weight um, or at the same pace? I, I'm actually running faster, but I don't know if that has anything to do with this new gym or just because I have just been training for so yeah, long yeah, yeah. that I've gotten faster. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you can feel I'm definitely a lot yeah, you are <laughs> like it's she just, looking good look, she look, it's she, just like fully developed I told like, her to just stay in her sports bra and her leggings cause her abs no, were showing and shut. she's gonna choke somebody with a arm for real <laughs> <That's not better. laughs> um, so yeah so that that's really what I'm doing on an everyday basis I wake up at 5.30 in the 5.30 a.m., go to a 6 a.m. class, um, yes. lifting weights, and then occasionally in the evenings, then I go run. Okay. So that's where I am. Okay, Jasmine, how are you staying fit? Because I know you just got back into it because mm -hmm. she kind of fell off, but this girl don't it's gain okay. weight. This girl it's don't okay. gain weight. Like, she muscle back, memory. <laughs> yeah, she just don't gain weight. So, like, I know if I fell off, I would look like I fell off. Mm -hmm. She looked like the same since when she was in sports and post-sports. Um. So, yeah, basically, I mean, I guess my friends had a big um, thing to do with it. Like, one of my friends... Um, kind of like pushed me to start going to the gym again with him so I ended I like I started going and since I'm in school and everything like it's sometimes hard to make it to the gym when you have like a paper due but you gotta take advantage of the free gym mm -hmm. well it's not free because I pay with tuition well you know you're paying tuition okay. yeah but um and then you when you came you were like you let's go mm -hmm. run like let's go do this so I was like okay like let's do it you know like why not whatever because like like that's Steph said like when I got here I just like was so excited with the weather and I was like I'm not used to this I feel like I have to go outside and just like take advantage of this weather and that's actually something um I'm sorry to cut you off no, but okay. when I first moved out here I was very like let's party let's go drink I was drinking like five days out of the week and she waking up sorry, girl. <laughs> I was she's and, a trained um, alcoholic <laughs> you know waking up hung over on the weekends and really wasting a beautiful day and then I kind of I cut back a lot a lot um <laughs> and now I'm just like I'd rather wake up early on a Saturday and yeah. Sunday go running go on a hike like just mm -hmm. I just feel like the weather like she said is just so hot because the weather it's so beautiful out here so I'm so glad she was able to get you Going. to get moving you know and and it's funny that you say that though because my brother the other day after watching the marathon on tv he was like jasmine are you ready to go for a run he's like do you want to go it's for a so run motivating and then i was like yeah do you want to go and i was like okay after my paper but like i ended up taking longer than i thought so i felt mm -hmm. bad he's like yeah me and monica like we ran like i did all take this little water water running. Running. So we ran, like how, how much you run like it. six miles or something no like okay that? i miles? literally never run past five like ever <laughs> like i just don't do it yeah. but like i just mentally check out mm -hmm. but like i'm sure i could do it if i really put my mental state there oh, yeah you just but push i think we did like a mile or two okay yeah i think i was gonna that's how you start yeah yeah well anyway so but it, his point he was, showed me the way i didn't know how to do he, you should um, tell him tell him to show you <laughs> we just made like a whole square around your thing but like you know he has little strides because he has little legs yeah. so i felt like faster but yeah. really i'm sure if he was my height like he'd be blowing me off the water because he's got <laughs> energy he's like 11. <laughs> yeah but yeah so um what did you say about the gym so like how are you saying yeah, so <laughs> we're just so excited yeah <laughs> So I've been going to the gym. I usually go the days that I go to school, so three times a week. That's good. Um, but yeah. at home, like I'll do like ab workouts, like in my room. Do you do any booty workouts? Cause you guys, her booty is popping. Whose booty? Yo, my little, <laughs> little, little tank back she here. Like nice, she has like a nice. You can tell she squats. She has like a nice lifted booty. <laughs> Thank you. Her booty Love don't it. skip a meal. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's another part too. Is like diet, but we'll get into that later. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't mean to embarrass. All right, so, so we'll embrace it. it. Yeah, embrace that booty. Embrace She's a J Lo fan. That's why you know she <laughs> knows. She's an ass first. She's an ass woman. Okay, mm -hmm. but now that you mentioned <laughs> diet, is your nutrition as um tip top as your fitness? Yeah, is, well, do you want to make us? You know, you want to transition off. Uh, to nutrition? Yeah. yeah. We're already on the topic. She's a, she's a new vegan. Yes. So, when people... First of all, I want to set the record straight. Set it straight, girl. Yeah. So, people are like, oh my god, you're vegan. So, vegan has a lot of context behind it and a lot of meaning behind it. 
vegan is if you say I'm a vegan, like everything you wear is vegan, mm-hmm. everything you you know yeah. you nothing from an vegan, animal, nothing like nothing is animal based. Got nothing it. is you know everything yeah, is that's good. Okay, so th- that's basically. Um, what a whole vegan is, <laughs> uh-huh. but what I like to. So you're consider, not a whole ass vegan. No, <laughs> I I do try to buy vegan products when I can. Oh right, the Patagonia. <laughs> Patagonia is actually I'm not sure if it's vegan. Actually, it's not vegan because my jacket has um like feathers in it. Oh, so is it faux feathers? It's not, like, I'm not sure though. I'm not. I don't know. Okay. But um, I like to consider. Or I like to tell people when I tell them, "Oh yeah, I'm vegan." It's like my diet is vegan based. Okay. So oh, I never knew that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I learned something new. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, test people now. Like, so are you really vegan? Are you a vegan? full vegan? <laughs> or are you, you a half ass vegan? vegan? <laughs> 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 straight. <laughs> but yeah, so um. I started being uh, my vegan diet uh, three months ago. So beginning of the year, um, I was like, "That's a good streak." Three I, months, and I saw one video. Kid you not, I saw one video of this girl on YouTube, and I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna be fucking vegan. I'm gonna be vegan." And, oh, I thought you were gonna uh, tell me about like these animals being like chopped no. up and shit. Well, I, like, I don't I, tell me that because I love me. I'm. <laughs> You know I try to eat. You know how they make chicken nuggets? I don't tell you. I don't eat chicken nuggets. Listen, I don't eat chicken nuggets anymore. I don't eat chicken nuggets either. <laughs> don't eat chicken nuggets. You're gonna turn into one, anyways. So, <laughs> so yeah. So uh, three months. Um, I've had my cheat days here and there because it is hard. Like once a week? Uh, no. Well, when I have to. So. As a Latina, you have Hispanic families who have carne asadas like all the time, and you know there's some moments where you don't have an option. Yeah, you're right. You don't have a choice not to eat, and if you want to eat, I mean, you know, you eat what's there. Yeah. So, like, say if you go to family gatherings, you know, and there's rice and beans and like different vegetables and stuff, I'll eat that, but I just won't eat the meat. Yeah, but if we go to a restaurant mm-hmm. and we there there is no vegan options, then I'll have fish, which is pescatarian. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. uh huh. So I'll, I'll. So you just will only cheat with fish, not meat. No, meat I haven't had a um. Actually, I had a um, meat. Actually, I had chicken at one of my friend's parties because his mom served. Well, his oh, mom you can't was like, you gotta eat. Uh, you can't no. disrespect. And I was like, okay, no problem. So, you know, I ate it and I did feel guilty, but there's nothing did I could have done in that instant. Did you feel like, how did your body weird? react? Weird? Like, how did it react because you've been getting used to not eating meat? So, I think because I was drinking and stuff, I didn't really feel it as much as I would. But the you other... You felt the hangover? <laughs> no comment but um the other day we went to one of my favorite diners with my family and my dad was just like have some french toast you know and I, that's my favorite thing like i always used to get that french toast and like hash browns and stuff like that you let me eat, tell you you can't eat it because of the butter or like why can't well you french toast? the way you make the french eggs. toast all oh, the eggs though yes yeah but are hash browns not vegan Oh, no, of course they are. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. You were just describing those. Your yeah. Dream. Okay, got it. <laughs> but <laughs> so I had the the French toast and it did not sit well at all. And my dad goes, see, that's what you get for changing your whole diet. Like you can't. Uh, you shit yourself? So how? What are your parents? What are your parents <laughs> tell you? No, uh, when I started because doing I think that, Latino parents don't really understand this whole oh vegan. well so it's definitely been like a, a journey and it's still going on i get made fun of all the time by my entire family like yeah. it's they're supportive that they are of course 100 percent. but they always get their comments but they always have their comments that yeah. come at the end it's like oh can you eat this since you're vegan it's just like Okay. Everyone has well, how do you say vegan in spanish <laughs> everyone just has this connotation uh, vegano vegano oh. 
I just feel like everybody has this connotation of vegan as like a hipster, like for bougie sure. type thing. Like, yeah. so for them, it's just like you eat what you eat, and that's that. Like, I think because our, you know, a lot of our parents, you know, came from like nothing. Yeah, or like, um, or just weren't as well off as we are. You know, mm-hmm. to in order to have these like, exactly, like so like, yeah. they were like. You didn't have this option when we were mm-hmm. when we were growing up. We didn't have this mm-hmm. option. You ate what you ate. They weren't informed either. On, like, exactly. Why. But I also think that back in their days, um, you know, fruits and everything just wasn't as bad. Mm-hmm. Like if you realize, our parents don't have the seasons. Of course, yeah. yes, it comes. But now in days, like now, I'm gluten free. I'm this. I'm that. Fifty years ago. Nobody had this, and yeah. I just think like whatever is going into what we're eating, all these chemicals, all you know, all these things that they're putting in, mm-hmm. it's really affecting us. But back in the days, I don't think they had these that issues. many. Well, well the yeah. reason why they didn't have these issues is because they were unknowledgeable about the harm that these products that we consume are that are actually bad for us. Like they, we didn't have that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the t- uh, technology or the science to, you know, um, know that, oh, gluten, this is what's making my stomach hurt, you know, or, mm-hmm. you know, basically yeah. to know that milk is not good for us because yeah. milk has always been that consistent, yeah. like, you have to drink your milk and that's another and strong I was actually, and so that's that, but it's not true. another thing, like, I wasn't eat, drinking milk, excuse me, uh, like cow's milk. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm lifting weights and I'm trying to put on that weight, I need to, you know, intake more calories. So I started drinking milk again. And it, like full, like whole milk? 2%, but okay. technically, yeah. Yeah. Similar. Um, I don't know. And how does your body Oat feel? milk has a little I bit more. I just feel so like- heavy. Yeah, I feel heavy when I eat steak. I eat. I feel heavy. I actually try to go vegetarian, not vegan. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, and the way that I started, kind of by limiting my, I love red meat, mm-hmm. was during Lent. So during this season, I always give up red meat, mm-hmm. and it was like a way for me to kind of like mentally start preparing myself. Like, sure. okay, this is what it feels like, um, but somehow. But because I just run so much, I just feel like there's a lot of things that I cannot cut off. Mm-hmm. And I'm also a very picky eater. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I need to get, you know, I, I need to, oh, you know by now. Uh, uh-huh. So I need to get, like, my protein and all these stuff from my iron or whatever from all these different places. So I can't really fully transition to mm-hmm. that yet. No, I would yeah. like to be plant-based. But for... That's how like all these cows are getting their protein and whatnot. They're, it's everything is there's protein in plants and all. It's just yeah. like not as heavy. It's not as heavy as like the exactly. So the meats. And you can be picky. You know, people are like, oh, what do you eat? Like, mm-hmm. do you not eat? Like, and they make fun of me. Sometimes. I was ignorant like that, and then I like read more about it. Yeah. I just personally love meat, like red meat, yeah. chicken, all that fish. Mm-hmm. So I just don't want to give it up. That's fine. <laughs> and tofu is one of the. Yeah. highest that uh things that you can make with like when you're vegan or like even like, like you can it. make it you don't like it no. well you have to season it if and it, that's it tastes of, like whatever you season it or cook it with uh-huh. it like catches it, on yeah, it absorbs can, the flavor you can use a it lot is. of different things to like season it you could saute it like i make it in like teriyaki vegetables and rice like i just it. don't like the texture it's like I don't, yeah it freaks me out well it depends like which one you get thing. Jiggle. Like if you get <laughs> extra firm tofu, then that would be better. But don't get soft tofu. I mm. mean, I don't mm. think that's anything good for anything yeah. other than like I maybe bacon. Eating my, like I don't even like fish. So like you know, like mm-hmm. I couldn't even cut off cut off red meat or chicken because I don't like fish. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and the good oh, thing I is that fish. like being vegan now in today's day and age is like there's so many options. there's so many it's alternatives. Easier. Yeah, I went to breakfast this morning. Um, and, and you live in California, the land of all the health yeah. nuts. So uh-huh. like, there's almost always like ninety percent chance that every restaurant has like something vegan related on the menu. Yeah, I would say I've gone to a vegan restaurant called Gracias Madre in Beverly Hills. Oh, we went there for Bomb. drinks. So good. Let's go back. We should. <laughs> we should take. Oh her. yeah, that'd be nice. 
which is legal. <laughs> Who says I can get it now? It's we a restaurant. <laughs> it is a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I take it back. I have food. <laughs> it's all right. I used to take good dudes back in the day, but hey, yeah. whatever. We're grown. We're grown now. <laughs> So what is your favorite thing to whip up in the kitchen now that you're vegan and all that? <laughs> there we go. So um, it'd be kind of hard to tell you because you'd have to try it. <laughs> um, but I guess just making like bowls with okay. like rice, veggies, and uh, like tofu so like a, a protein based like something that'll fill you up mm -hmm. more so um it'd be like tofu or like a quinoa patty or even like some ground beef they sell beefless ground beef um it's made out of soy so uh that's an option too so just like bowls that where you get like a little bit of everything okay there. yeah all right and for you <laughs> um miss picky eater very picky um i pretty much like to do things that are easy and that you know i can eat the next day um big fan of cauliflower rice okay. we make that like fried uh fried, fried rice yeah okay. um throw in some chicken there um couscous Quinoa, those are like essentials that I always like to have because they're so easy. You can mm -hmm. substitute them for rice too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, any, anything easy, honestly. Mm -hmm. No, I feel you. Anything easy. Since we're always on the go, you know. Always on the go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always on the move. Um, I always like to have avocado on hand just because, I, you know, it's a, it's a good fat. Is the best. I have avocado toast like almost every what a Cali oh, hoe. What a basic mm -hmm. Avocado bitch. toast with Trader Joe's seasoning. <laughs> Everything bagels. Who's buying that Trader Joe's seasoning? Yeah. Me, bitch. Anyway, um, my favorite dish takes 10 minutes. It's this Mediterranean dish that my cousin taught me. Shout out to Kat and her boyfriend, Adi, his Greek ass, um, <laughs> who taught her. Um, it's... A salmon orzo dish so you broil the salmon in the oven for like 10 minutes and then while that's broiling we have the pasta the orzo on the oven mm -hmm. on the stove and then while that's cooking you're whipping up this lemon this sweet lemon sauce to drizzle all over the pasta okay. and the salmon so it's lemon Dijon mustard brown sugar and a little bit of olive oil and then you throw some feta cheese on top <laughs> with some dill. I had it. It's very good. So it doesn't sound person. like it was very good. No, 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 no. It was amazing. That's like, what I like to you. hear. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> I'm not a fish person. So, so substitute that with some chicken. shredded chicken Perfect. in there. Perfect. Um, but yeah, 10 minutes and you'll get leftovers because you know you're a big fan of leftovers. Love it. But like with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's wrap this up. Any tips or advice that you have for someone who is just starting, you know, this fitness lifestyle, this healthier lifestyle? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll end it. Um, I really think it's all about just getting, you know, just getting out there and just do it. And no, this is not a sponsor. Um, like but if you want to sponsor her. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> You know, just literally getting out there and just doing it. Um, finding a buddy, somebody's gonna hold you accountable. I think that is really helpful because sometimes it's like, oh my god, I told Monica I was gonna meet her at seven a.m. I don't want to let her down, so I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just getting out there. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you know, I know that it's really hard for us not to be hard on ourselves, but I think it also starts with us just being positive to yeah, ourselves and, and saying, like, I love my body or perhaps saying all these affirmations, like, I will change and I will drop 20 pounds yeah. or whatever you want to do with it. Or I will run faster. Yes, um, be committed. Yeah, committed, dedication. Um yeah, and I think Oprah said it best. I attended one of her events this past weekend, um, and I have it right here. Well, Oprah inspiration. <laughs> Always. Um, 
she has this quote that says, is it one day or day one? Um, I know I've been guilty of, you know, saying, I'll go tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. Oh, it's cold. It's raining. There's always, and it's very easy for us to find an excuse. Um, you know, so could tomorrow be my day one of my lifestyle change, whether it be yes. my eating habits or my workout habits, whatever it might be. Um, so I think we should all make day one tomorrow. Um, just go up there. Just Go for a walk. Go for Seize a ride. day, bitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be on the move. Be on the move, always. And how about you? Now that you're hopped back on the horse and all that. <laughs> right. So, um, I guess all I have to say is that it takes 21 days mm -hmm. to break in a new habit. Within those 21 days, you will find yourself getting accustomed to the things that you have been uh doing like going to the gym the way i i guess and i i realized the change after 21 days mm -hmm. like i was marking it on my calendar i was like okay i started this day this is when my 21st day is gonna be oh, and yeah once and once i was I like love that yeah <laughs> it's almost like you hold yourself accountable you yeah. gave yourself a deadline i i realized goal. yeah so once I hit that 21st marks. day, I was thought it, um, I found it to be more of a part of me than I thought it was going to be. Um, like I kind of, I got just used to it and accustomed to going to the gym. And that's something that like, you know, you'll get used to, you'll get used to getting the habit of doing mm -hmm. things, something that you constantly are doing. And when you don't do it, that's when you feel it. Mm -hmm. Like when you don't run for a day, the next day it's just like, oh shit, like it's harder for me to run Absolutely. today, right? Yeah. And that's how it was with soccer. Like, so you miss a day of practice and then the next day you're like huffing and puffing because your body needs to have that routine mm -hmm. uh, exercise and workout. You know, I definitely feel that. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all a mental game it and is. if you tell yourself you're going to do something, it's just... Stick make to it. Your day and one. Make it your day one, guys. Yes. And from there on, just like stay motivated. And, yeah. keep and I love that you just said you like wrote it down. It's almost made it seem like you know you gave yourself a goal at some time. I know personally, I like to do this because I, there's a there's something satisfying about, about checking like, something check, off. Exactly. So I have to. I don't. I write whenever I have to do my long distance mm -hmm. run. Like this Saturday, I'm running 13 miles. So I have run like 13 run miles, miles. Mm -hmm. because it's just like, oh, I did it. Like yes. my biggest thing of the day, I did it. So, yeah. you know, maybe writing things down, going to the gym at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Give yourself goals. Because, and once you start achieving those goals, you're going to feel more motivated to Keep continue. Going. And you're like, damn. And we're talking about motivation for um, like from people. Like, yeah. you hear people, like, motivating you. Like, my friends, like, push me, and they tell me, they're like, wow, oh, you yeah, look so good. It really goes exactly. the distance. Like, wow, yeah. you really look good right now. Like, you show me how to do what you're doing. And I was like, okay, come and to the gym. And, if, and if you're already there, like, in your fitness career, in your fitness lifestyle or whatever it may be, like, motivate other people. Like, yeah. you know, acknowledge the small yes. changes that they're she doing. She told me I look good today, so I'm doing fine. And then I was yes. showing, girl. <laughs> But thank you guys. Those are great tips. Thank you guys for hopping on my podcast. Until next time, I'll catch you on Momo Move. Bye. Bye. <laughs>